What is up, fellow gamers? Freak here, back with some League of Legends action. Today I'll be showcasing you my top 10 most intriguing items for Season 14. First up is Eclipse. And why is Eclipse interesting? Because I think it's going to get overlooked. People are going to witness fighter items and focus on Black Cleaver, Shoujin, Trinity Force, all of which are pretty mediocre build paths for certain champions that really want to have AD early game in order to snowball their laning phase or clear the jungle, even have better wave clear. For example, if you play Riven, you really want these components in order to snowball your laning phase and because Eclipse is also really cheap, it further uh, goes into that because you are going to be able to get your first item much quicker than the opponent and you'll have a long window to punish him if he wants to buy a 3k gold item you are already ahead with kills and uh, CS lead so it's going to just be a good time if you end up buying Eclipse because this item only lost movement speed from uh, being demoted as a legendary and now the passive does a bit more damage you don't have lethality anymore but you have a lot more AD the shield is about the same, the cooldown is the same so you only really lost the movement speed and it's cheap but if you compare it to other items such as Black Cleaver Shojin you can become tankier with Eclipse if the fight is long enough if you scale, if you end up buying items such as Desdance, Sterax, Spirit Visage that further synergize and another item that we'll mention later meaning that since this item also does pretty nice damage on the proc and it has a lot more ED it can make you tankier while also having more damage while also having better build pad while also being cheaper than <laughs> other fighter items so of course you will really like this in a lot of cases on Lee Sin, Jarvan, Kha'Zix and such. But we'll see because other variables matter as well and Eclipse is gonna excel in my opinion when the fights can be pretty long so you can get a lot of shield procs. If there's a lot of burst damage you probably prefer having more flat health so you don't uh, die right away and you're able to utilize your kit and more cooldowns, right? But I just mention it because I want you guys to have an eye out for Eclipse on fighters and also maybe a few assassins that want to go into a more sustained build but if they really think they can't uh, burst any targets reliably. Anyway, moving forward we have Frozen Heart which got 400 gold cheaper lost 20 armor which is 400 gold value. Frozen Heart looks very broken in season 14 and I'm not sh exactly sure I have a few reasons for why they decided to make Frozen Heart cheaper and they also slightly buffed Randwin on top of that. First of all, they probably want Frozen Heart to be a staple for supports, that's why they made it so cheap because supports didn't really have an armor item to buy, except for Frozen Heart if you wanted to pay that much gold. And on top of that, a lot of champions are getting their items sooner, especially fighters, they have to pay 300 gold less for some items, maybe you know, you're getting other items like Yumu's Eclipse faster, so if you play a Malphite in top lane, you might want to have a cheaper front heart in order to keep up with the power they are getting. The problem is that I think they went a bit overboard and instead of making it, let's say, 200 gold cheaper, they made it 400 gold cheaper. And on top of that, maybe you want to remove a little bit of power from Marksman in uh, an indirect way because they didn't really remove much power from their current itemization when they are supposed to remove some power from items because they aren't mythics anymore, right? So marksmen need to lose power in different ways and I'm not sure how much they are losing from Kraken Slayer getting changed for example, is it a buff, is it a nerf? Um, green suit changes and other crit item changes for example. But 
we'll see what uh, ends up happening with Frozen Heart. It's probably gonna get nerfed, it looks quite broken. Should probably be to a goal more expensive, considering everything in the system. Next up is Yumu's Ghostblade, and what I want you guys to understand about Yumu's Ghostblade is that it offers everything you need in this item at a very cheap price. Riot probably wants this to be a staple for assassins, and not only that, if you look at the item, you are getting 60 AD and 18 lethality right away. No funny little lethality passive, no ability here, just raw flat stats of damage, the movement speed out of combat, and the movement speed of the active for a very cheap price. Everything you need to just quickly move around the map, get close to the target, and assassinate it with uh, hopefully one rotation. So this is gonna be really popular, not only on pro pretty much most assassins, although you shouldn't just brainedly buy it every game, even in situations in which it might not be efficient, but also on a bunch of marksmen like Misfortune, Draven, Jin. They are probably going to like this item uh, in some games. And also, Riven, Renekton, maybe even something like Seth could purchase this item. And because it's so cheap and it has the utility, you are going to be able to get your second item a lot quicker than normal, which can be some durability to make up for the fact that Yumu is a glass cannon item. So you can still sort of utilize it on fighters. And fighters used to buy Yumu's Ghostblade a bit here and there, very long ago, in a completely different time of League of Legends and very different uh, itemization, but it used to be a bit of a thing. Titanic Hydra is also something worth considering, and mostly because it got much better as a rush. Currently on live, Titanic Hydra is a late game skewed item, mid game at the very least. You need other HP items to make this item effective. You only get about 40 AD when you purchase it as a rush on live. This version has AD by itself and only the on hit damage scales has extra HP as well. And yes, the item is a bit expensive and it doesn't have ability haste or movement speed or any utility like that, which a lot of champions would like to have it, even if they are auto attackers to stick to their targets. But it's still going to be amazing for a bunch of champions like Trundle, Warwick, Shen, even Jax, which used to rush Titanic Hydra for different reasons. And I'm not saying it's going to be a staple, but you can definitely have games where you'll... Uh, well, it's going to be a good idea to rush Titanic Hydra on Jax. Overall, the item looks very solid. Not really such a late game item, which I think is more preferable because you want the wave clear and the power right away on all of these auto attackers. And like I said, you don't have any CDR, it's quite a bit more expensive than the other fighter items, and that is the price you're paying for having this power. So expect to see and play a lot of uh, champions that will rush that in Kyra in the next season. I'm not going to say it's necessarily broken, the item just simply seems solid and balanced. It's just going to offer you exactly the utility you need to, you know, make your champion more effective. And hopefully that is going to solve some of the problems Shen players have with the character, for example, where they actually have a proper itemization to do what they want to do as Shen and carry games, not just be a little support, right? Anyways, Protobalt next. Oh, I didn't really want to add this item to the list because it's nothing too special except that Rocket Belt is very cheap once again and that means that even though it doesn't have a lot of damage on the stats it's mostly like HP and ability race because it's so cheap you can instantly buy an Emptom uh, with a price difference compared to other items so it's mostly it's like an 80 AP to me and overall you might see a larger pool of champions like some fighters, not just assassins type champions buying this item, maybe even some mages in some cases, maybe you'll even see Vagar V2 going proto-belt Vagar rushing into your family, pressing his cage. I mean, we'll really 
see what happens with this. And it has pretty nice synergy with uh, another item that is also not very expensive. We'll mention it later on this list. Overall, really solid. It's gonna very much accelerate your future purchases, or you're gonna simply get it very quickly if you buy it as a second item. You can justify it on uh, Gwen, Mordecai, so you just need a gap closing against some range champions, for example. And if you play something like Echo, which loves Rabadon's Dead Cap, you are going to get your Rabadon's Dead Cap third item much, much faster compared to Live, uh, which is definitely going to be powerful. And it's not going to make Dead Cap a thing that players avoid so much. Kenny Rooker is uh, next up, and we can make a bigger discussion around this. So, Riot gave a lot of nice things to mages in their itemization in Season 14. And mages as a class, they have a lot of options in their kit and power, as in most mages, of course it depends on the specific kit, but in general, mages have a lot of range, poke, burst, crowd control. While on the other hand, marksmen have a lot of DPS, but they don't have all of this utility, range, and CC that mages have. Therefore, marksmen are supposed to be good at killing tanks and DPSing them down, while the weakness of mages, because they are good at so many other things, should be to be weak against tanks, with some exceptions where some mages, like Cassiopeia, for example, might function better against tanks because she's more like a marksman in her approach, in her kit. It's not so black and white, it's a gray area, but overall, in order to balance the game in some way and make mages satisfying to play and have uh, power and fun tools, they had to buff some tank MR itemization. And keep in mind that they didn't buff with Sand or Malmortius, they simply buffed some tank magic resist items, uh, which are still weaker than what Force of Nature used to be for most of the time with a 25% percentage magic resist. Um, although the new Force of Nature is kind of close to that because it has so much magic resist from the passive, and I don't know the maths exactly and how they interact with Void stuff and so on, but Kenny Rooker is very strong, especially if you are a tank laning into a mage. But at the same time, if mages are going to be really strong, then why would you want a tank in mid lane, for example, or in top lane? Sometimes if uh, we start seeing more mages in top lane, such as Ryze, Cannon, and whatnot, when you could simply have a mage, if they are truly that powerful, like, wouldn't you rather have a mage compared to just doing a rock paper scissors game so you're trying to counter the enemy mage now it's gonna depend on what kind of team comp you are playing and it's not gonna change that much how the laning phase is gonna interact in certain spots because a lot of tanks already are strong into mages they just don't have the best itemization which actually happened with abyssal mask when it used to have catalyst in the build pad catalyst spectre skull and they end up removing that and now they made something like Kenny Rooker, we have Spectre Scowl and Negatron Cloak, which combined with this Galio Shield, which might get nerfed, will uh, counter a lot of these Burst Mages. But it's not going to be very effective against something with strong DPS. It's still going to be weaker than what Force of Nature is in Season 14, or what Force of Nature used to be before they nerfed it on uh, well, our current version of League of Legends, so to speak. So, obviously tanks should be a bit stronger than average against a burst mage like Lux or Vega. That should uh, be their strength. I'm not gonna say this item isn't overpowered, and maybe it's even gonna be overpowered on purpose for its specific goal, just like they balance some other items such as frozen heart because um tanks 
don't really scale that well so they need this kind of power spike this tool but we'll see what happens it might get nerfed quite quickly even before it makes it to the live version next up we have Riftmaker and why I want to mention Riftmaker and why it made it to this list is because we finally have a dedicated item for magic fighters which we never had in League of Legends for 14 years Demonic Embrace Online doesn't feel that niche it's simply a DPS item, a DOT item it's just a Leandris for melee champions that will not go Leandris for some fighters and the current version of Riftmaker has very little EP, it's quite expensive, the build path is terrible, the only event sucks because it's 33% value, so you're getting abysmal healing if you're fighting a champion, because most of these fighters have AoE abilities. And on top of that, now this only event works 100% value against champions. And yes, it takes some time to stack, that is alright, even if you get hit by uh, ranged stuff, you're still gonna start stacking this item. Maybe you should have 3 seconds stack time like live Riftmaker. I am not exactly sure, but in my opinion Riftmaker looks quite solid because you, it comes with about 90 ability power when you purchase it for a relatively decent price. 3k gold is uh, the breaking ground for me where an item isn't expensive at all, but also isn't really cheap. It's an appropriate price. It has uh, all the stats you need on this kind of champions and the passive uh, looks quite solid plus haunting guys fits nicely with this archetype of champions because they also auto attack a lot and haunting guys can boost your auto attack damage or other random uh, physical damage abilities that you might have uh, for example i mean there are there are a lot of champions like that but like let's say you buy rift maker on volleyball you're gonna have some spells that deal physical damage so that's definitely gonna help and obviously the rift maker itself is gonna give him even more boost to that definitely an item that will just feel worth buying finally you won't feel so terrible about playing with champions next up is thunder sky which i think is a very interesting item and to be clear i want you guys to understand how this item works it's similar to hard steel uh, more similar to Udyr's ram stance where you stun people so you can proc this item with an individual cooldown of 6 seconds on each champion on enemy team so you can just go and auto attack all 5 of them you are going to get 5 procs in quick succession if that is allowed and then they all have their own 6 seconds cooldown okay just getting that out of the way so you can see how the item works which means that compared to Divine Sunderer, you will not get this 2 second high damage, high sustain proc on Jax in a sideline and completely dominate in a pretty toxic way in some situations, especially against the tankier champions. So you will really counter a tank, not necessarily because it will deal high damage, even though Sunderer used to be much broken in the past. Uh, so much more max health damage for some reason but anyway overall you would heal so much that a tank or some other sustained fighter that wouldn't go device under wouldn't be able to move your hp bar much really which means that since it's a six second cooldown in one v one in side lane it's or likely going to be more of a team fighting item where you can actually get more procs and it pretty much lands as a healthier combination of divine sunderer and gordrinker where a fighter can get sustained output and maybe this item has too much damage for how sus much sustain it grants so you could end up nerfing it by 5 ad or even 10 ad or something like that because the difference is that yes you can buy these items black cleaver shojin trinity force which have damage but if you go standard sky you give up damage for sustain so if your champion cares more about utility or the enemy team is simply low damage and you want to be unkillable what kind of whatever kind of situation it might be 
Sundered Sky will fill a much needed niche in League of Legends. For example, if you play Jarvan, you are going to be able to constantly flag between targets, proc this item and sustain yourself similarly to Gorvinker. But uh, it also has more counterplay. You can, you know, actually properly kind the champion buying this and not just randomly walking up into his auto attack range to give him more healing. That might be a problem in some situations. Uh, <laughs> people will just walk out in melee range for no reason and give the user heal. We'll see what actually ends up happening with this item. The healing on it is not insanely crazy. Um, and, well, we, we'll, we'll really see what's going to happen. But overall, I think it's going to be something that might be popular. We should keep an eye out for it. Archangel stuff is very interesting in my opinion. Because now you have a tier item combined with a lost chapter item. Which makes it extremely slot efficient compared to life on all of these mages such as Cassiopeia, Rise, Kassadin. That have to invest two slots to get these components. So they have to get their mythic and then Archangel Staff because uh, only the mythic is built out of Lost Chapter. While with this version, you can go Tier Lost Chapter, Relay. Tier Lost Chapter, Rod of Ages, even. And you're still gonna be able to get it in a reasonable amount of time. And still have that big laning phase power that mages normally get to have. And then you're gonna be able to have these item combinations of getting a strong laning phase and then having the Seraph shield quite early combined with a Relay or a Leandris or a Cosmic Drive. Who knows what uh, certain champions will buy in Season 14 exactly. But I was pretty sure that this item is probably gonna get overlooked. So it's definitely worth mentioning. Archangel Staff, well, Seraph's Embrace, whatever, is going to be quite a bit more powerful simply because of this build that changed since Lost Chapter is such a powerful component for mages in the laning phase and just a desired thing to have. It makes uh, the game much better if a mage buys Lost Chapter. Storm Surge is the last on the list. And I think Storm Surge is very interesting. It pretty much resembles a Shadow Flame in terms of the stats. You have some Magic Pen, 100 AP, almost 3k gold, and instead of HP, you have movement speed. But it has something that can only be used mostly against squishies for Magic Assassins and Burst Mages. And it's very similar to the old Keystone in the Mastery Tree. I think it was called Storm Raider Surge or something like that. Just a mini phase rush in this case. That can allow you to trigger an effect that ends up dealing a lot of burst damage. And if the target ends up dying, if you are really fed, or you just have a lot of burst against a squishy target, or, of course, if the target is already low HP because of your teammate, you are going to trigger an explosion in a pretty big radius, which... Um, yeah, can make this item uh, quite a bit snowbally. On top of that, you also end up getting a little bit of gold, which is similar to Collector. And this is the AP Collector now. Definitely gonna be interesting one. Evelyn, Akali, Fiddlesticks, Vega, Syndra, and it's gonna be something situational where you are really thinking, can I actually consistently 100 to 0 people with my character against that specific team compositions? And it might even get nerfed, even though I think overall the item is fair, simply because there will be player frustration around getting one shot, even though some champions are designed to one shot, and when you purchase this item, at least you don't get uh, health and other things like that, and you might be overall 
forced to go into a pretty glass cannon build, maybe um, a lost chapter item, into Stern Surge, into Dead Cap, just to fulfill the goal, the mini game of the passive that it offers. Because of course the cooldown is quite long, so if you waste it just for some random poke, or if you hit a tank with it, it's going to be quite useless. And if you play a mage, the tank is frontlining, and you hit him with random abilities, end up dealing 35% max health for some reason. Of course, this item is, for the most part, going to get a bit wasted, and you'd rather just have other items. So you really have to pick your cards, right, when you think about itemization, especially in Season 14, because I think the itemization is getting just a little bit more interesting more interesting enough for people to be excited and to actually come up with uh, new builds and not just build the same thing every game such as okay i'm a mage that goes leandris every game into some shadow flame and then whatever if they have magic resist i go void stuff i guess and if not i go dead cap if they have oompa loompa engage one shot then i go zonia well it's not that simple like some champions can build horizon focus now because they actually bug fist it and so on i'm talking about live of course live version of horizon focus but whatever overall this is my top 10 some other items could uh, probably make it to the list uh, but these are simply the items that i wanted to talk about in a top 10 do a little bit of clickbaiting on twitch television and on uh, youtube on twitter whatever anyways Thanks for watching guys and look forward to me making more content around items, coming up with uh, different builds, maybe make some build videos and let people know about the Alcadet project that uh, might be around the corner sooner or later and any bit of support really matters. Thanks so much for watching, have a nice day and let's try to enjoy season 14, I hope, I hope it's gonna be a good season man, I'm really tired of season 13. League of Legends is so boring. Nobody wants to play this thing. Nobody's grinding. Uh, peace.